Um, I do want to get, so Val's got one here. It says, can you explain the difference on who pays the taxes and insurance on an owner financing deal subject to and lease option? Okay, so let, let's kind of take these one at a time here. The easiest one to talk about is probably subject to because most of the time, not always, but most of the time when you get a mortgage from a bank, they're going to require you to have an escrow account and they're going to require that that taxes and insurance be prorated every month so that when it comes due, it's already been collected and then they make the payment for the seller of record on that behalf. Okay. So if you're putting a sub, if you're buying a property subject to, and we're going to continue to just make the payments to that bank, then it's going to be business as usual, right? We're going to make those same payments. They're going to actually disperse the taxes and insurance payments. On your lead sheet, there's a question that says PITI, that's principal interest tax and insurance. And so if they say, yes, taxes and insurance are included in my monthly payment, then it flushes through, just like what he said. Yep. So let's break that down then. Lease option could be either or, right? Because we could purchase a lease option and still be making the payments to the bank. Um, so if we're making payments to the bank and it's already set up escrowed, that is something that will continue to be done. Now, what Just do you like do? In, sub in subject to. What if it's a free and clear house? So we're getting on there's financing? No, there's no escrow. Or we, it could be lease option on a free and clear house. So you can do this probably 14 different ways. You could say, you know, when I get the first option payment in, that I'm going to pay taxes and insurance for three years. You could use a third party company to filter your monthly payments. Say you use your attorney's escrow account and you make payments to the attorney and they keep part of it for taxes and insurance every year. Uh, yeah, every month, just like a regular escrow account at the bank. And then they ship the seller the rest of it. Or you could say, you know, Mr. Seller, I'm going to include it and you're still going to make the payments. Or, I mean, you could do it any way you wanted to but you need to agree to that. And that's one of those things that if, that if if you forget that, double check with your attorney and make sure that when he writes up the full blown contract, that it's in there and it's very clearly spelled out. I have, um, Val's next question is, is the tenant buyer expected to pay taxes and insurance? I, in my experience, tenant buyers are not ready for that. They want to make their monthly payment. They want to make their electric and their internet. Okay. So whatever their monthly payment is, I usually try to be the smarter one in the situation and just deduct that taxes and insurance out of it. I don't put it on top of it. I, I make it clean and easy for them so they don't get confused on what's going where. And it's in my best interest to use their money to pay the taxes and insurance anyway. They don't know what I use that money for every month anyway. And if you've got a $800 a month payment and you're collecting $1,200 a month, then you're still making money even if you had to pay taxes and insurance out of the rent every money, every month. Got money on the mind. Yeah. And the easiest thing is a lot of times a tenant buyer will ask about that when you say, no, you, you don't have to worry about that. I'm going to take care of that. Oh, so you're saying you're going to pay my taxes and insurance for me. Yes, I am. You know, I'm going to use your, I'm not going to tell them this. I'm going to use your money to do it, but yes, absolutely. I'm, I'm going to make that payment. I'm going to use your money, but yes, I'm making the payment. So now, easy way to do that. Speaking of tenant buyers though, they need a renter's insurance policy. And that is also in the full blown contract. Okay. And if you're not in the group, I've got a one pager contract that we use. And then I've got a full blown contract that we use. Okay. The one pager doesn't go into a lot of specifics. It's just a one pager. The full blown contract is 14 pages on the seller side and 11 pages on the buyer side or vice versa. Either way, it's over 10 pages on seller side and on the buyer side. And definitely when you're talking to your tenant buyer, you want to make sure that they have renter's insurance, but that's just to cover their crap. I mean, their valuables that they moved into the house. Okay. You keep a landlord policy, you keep liability insurance, you keep whatever it is that your insurance broker recommends that you have. 
Um, if your seller has uh, a mortgage on it, or uh, even if they don't, you want to become an additional insured on your seller's insurance policy. But your tenant buyer, they need renter's insurance in case something catastrophic happens, like a fire or a hurricane or something. They want their stuff covered. Yep. Any other questions?